This is Contra Radio Network, internet radio for the discerning prepper and patriot. Life is unpredictable, but you can count on Valley Food Storage to help you and your family prepare. With clean, natural, great tasting, and long-lasting food storage, with our natural and nutritious freeze-dried food, you'll be storing the food you love to eat. Log on to ContraRadioNetwork.com and click on the Valley Food Storage banner. Hey, Daniel J. here, and I'm inviting you to tune into my radio show, MLM, the good, the bad, and the truth, here on Contra Radio Network. Catch Daniel Monday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Proper has made tactical gear with a purpose for over 50 years since their first U.S. Navy contract in 1967. Today, Proper designs and manufactures professional-level tactical apparel and gear for military, law enforcement, and public safety professionals and civilians, whether in the service, on the job, or off for the weekend. Log on to ContraRadioNetwork.com and click on the Proper banner now. Hi, this is John Jeffers. Join me for the Jeffers Brief, right here on the Contra Radio Network. Catch the Jeffers Brief, Wednesday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern Time on the Contra Radio Network. So are you tired of being tired? Well, then it's time to get the tea. Hey, it's Lisa here to tell you about this all-natural, all-organic tea I've been drinking that has had great results for over 20 years. It's called Life Change Tea, and it's specially formulated to help detoxify and cleanse your kidneys, liver, colon, and blood all at once. The colon is one of the most ignored organs in the human body. The faster that waste is eliminated from the body, the less time that waste sits in our intestines, spreading toxins to our bloodstream. This tea helps cleanse chemicals caused by outside intruders from our entire digestive system. And get this, weight loss can be a side effect. And with continued use of the tea, you can experience clear, healthier, younger looking skin, increased energy, and a happier outlook on life. So if you're tired of being tired, get the life change tea at getthetea.com. That's getthetea.com. And like me, you'll be glad you did. Talking the issues and taking the hit. The Two Crazy Guys. Catch the Two Crazy Guys right here on Contra Radio Network, Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. I feel good that I'm keeping myself informed. The Conservative Underground. Tune in to the Conservative Underground on the Contra Radio Network, Sundays at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Black Metal Firearms are a couple guys I know personally and friends of mine that put together some great accessories for all your firearms needs. Everything that I've seen them do is just top notch and very nice looking. BlackMetalFirearms.com. Check them out. I think you'll be glad you did. Go to Facebook, Black Metal Firearms. They got a great page there too. Learn more about the workmanship and the craftsmanship they put into it every accessory, and every build they do. This is the Contra Radio Network. Welcome to the Jeffers Brief, only on Contra Radio Network. Hello again, John Jeffers here, your host, founder, executive producer at Contra Radio Network, doing my own show, the Jeffers Brief. Welcome for another episode And don't forget, we have other shows as well on Contra Radio Network. Two Crazy Guys, Underground Conservative, The Prepper Guy, Prepping 2.0, MLM, The Good, The Bad, The Truth. All right. Now, if you watched last week's video, I I showed you 
if you've never heard of the tactical reload, I showed you what it looked like and why it's a freaking disaster. Actually, to sum it all up with the, the tactical reload, it's a solution in search of a problem. Maybe as future weapons come online, that, that, that might be a perfectly acceptable solution, but for right now, it isn't. All right. Now, we got a lot to do here. Tonight, I want, today, like I said, if you're watching the video, you can see this. If you're listening to it, you're probably not going to get it. But some of you have been, well, let's put it this way. I want to talk to you about using a flashlight while holding your handgun. Now, when I was in law enforcement, we trained for that. Mainly because, statistically speaking, most, not all, but most shootings take place in a low-light situation. And usually at less than seven yards. That's just statistics. That doesn't mean it'll happen to you. I'm not saying that. But just the same, if a grid goes down and you have to do a building search or whatever, or maybe you're in your house, you hear something. You should be familiar with how to use a flashlight while holding your handgun. All right? Because let's face it, how many cases have we heard of some drunk going into what he thought it was his own house, but it turns out it was not, and he ends up getting popped and capped by the homeowner? Or what if it's a small child getting up at night in the middle of the night to get you know, a thirst, you know, a drink of water or whatever. Or maybe it's a family dog or the cat. You know what I'm saying? So you need to, you should be using a flashlight. Now we're going to, I'm going to go over, this, I'm going to show you three techniques, the ones I've used. And don't for, you know, and it's something we, you want, I want you to understand. There are times we were on the range, we had to wait till it was like 9, 930 at night before we could do it. And one of the three things we did was because we wanted to use, they wanted to get us used to using a flashlight in a low light situation. If you work second shift or the midnight shift, it's gonna be dark more often than not. And like I said, statistically speaking, most shootouts with police happen in the dark, after hours, after sunset. So what I've got here is my SIG 229. It's empty. Nothing in the chamber, nothing at all. So we look it up, see, no problems. All right, decock it, all right. Now, some of the uh, ways you can use the flashlight, and I've seen this done a few times, and I've used it. Um, you should get a flashlight, your choice, doesn't matter. I prefer the small flashlight that has the end cap on off. Now, basically, you could use it like this. Hold it like this, like in a stabbing motion, so your thumb can hit the, the uh, on-off switch. So when you're doing your search, wrap your hand like this, and then hold it, and then you can just, wherever you point it, there you go. Um, some guys like it, some don't. I was comfortable with it, it wasn't a problem. Um, sometimes you can see it held between your fingers like this. Now the idea is you got these two fingers here. Well, you could wrap it like this and still access the on off button. Do to do, do wherever you point, there you go. You could do that. And then you have the other method. Well, there's two other types of methods. Um, one, okay, I'll, I'll kind of let it go. But it's called the FBI method. And what is, you hold it up over your head, so you're like this, and that way, the idea is you can move your flashlight around independently, like that. And the idea is, or you can hold it out to the side, like this, you know, so hold it out to the side and you can do, to do, to do. The idea being that if somebody is trying to take a bead uh, on you, and you got your flashlight away from you and take the shot, chances are, they might shoot at the flashlight, thus missing your vital organs. Um, I have seen something I don't like at all. I don't, I've never practiced it, never, ever, ever used it. 
and it's called the neck one. You hold it right up here, and you could hold out, and you could do this. Oh, look at me, look at me. You know what? I don't like that. Don't, don't, don't like it. Something else I want to talk to you about is this. When you're doing your search with your weapon, all right, you're doing your search, do not do this. You know, do not do one of these things like, oh, look at me. I got my flashlight on the whole time. Got my flashlight on. Don't do that. Don't do that at all. Instead, do this. You don't need to have your flashlight on all the time. It's bad enough you're going to be spotlighting yourself. So make sure you keep the flashlight in front of you. Otherwise, you go like this. And you're looking. Oh, what's that? And lights bouncing everywhere. It's bouncing off. You know, it's bad enough you're going to be illuminating yourself. So do something like this along these lines. Turn it on. Turn it off. Turn it on. Turn it off. Turn it on. Turn it off. All right. You follow me? You don't want to have to sit here and continually, you know, give the uh, bad guy, if there is one, um, a target to shoot at. Turn it on. Turn it off. You can use these three or four techniques interchangeably. You might want to go like this one time. Maybe next time you might want to click it around. Boom, boom, boom. Put it up here. Put it off to the side next time. Okay, there it is. Turn it off. At least, you know, the idea is see what you can. Now look. You could also do the next best thing. If there's a light switch, turn it on. You could do that. At night, you won't have a light. As, at, at night outside, you may not have a light switch to play with. So you're going to be stuck with what you have. Now, the Harriman technique, which is what this one is called, was really made for, um, it, it was developed in the uh, 70s early to mid 70s and it was when the police were carrying those big you know four or five d or c cell kel lights the big ones all right but nowadays we got the you know, with the cree leds it's lightweight it's small now some of you are saying well john why don't i just go get you know the the flashlight that's mounted on my pistol i'm not saying you can't i'm just saying that this is going to be cheaper than getting the switch for your uh, mounted on your pistol or your rifle as the case may be. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I mean. Financially, and no, you know, yes, you got the flashlight on there. Do you want to, plus, don't forget, you get this mounted on your, your weapon. Guess what you get to do? You get to buy a new holster to fit it. And they make them. All I'm saying is, if, you know, it, this makes more financial sense. I could, I could carry it with me in my pocket. I don't have to have a, I don't have to have the weapon on me, anything like that. I just prefer it, and this is why I was showing you. I wanted to show it to you, give you some ideas. Yes, there are lots of videos out there, but most of you, a lot of you guys, listen to me for whatever reason. You listen to me because you agree with me. All right. So your preppers and patriots, don't forget. Please, if you're going to do some Christmas shopping, check out our sponsors list at ContraRadioNetwork.com. Check out our sponsors, do some shopping, help support us. All right, look, I gotta do, I gotta hit the uh, end of segment one here. Gotta do, you know, the usual. Gotta do the commercials. Gotta get that in so we can pay the bills. I'll see you on the flip side. All right. Black Metal Firearms are a couple guys I know personally and friends of mine that put together some great accessories for all your firearms needs. Everything that I've seen them do is just top notch and very nice looking. BlackMetalFirearms.com. Check them out. I think you'll be glad you did. Go to Facebook, Black Metal Firearms. They got a great page there too. Learn more about the workmanship and the craftsmanship they put into every accessory and every build they do. 
Proper has made tactical gear with a purpose for over 50 years since their first U.S. Navy contract in 1967. Today, Proper designs and manufactures professional-level tactical apparel and gear for military, law enforcement, and public safety professionals and civilians, whether in the service, on the job, or off for the weekend. Log on to ContraRadioNetwork.com and click on the Proper banner now. Life is unpredictable, but you can count on Valley Food Storage to help you and your family prepare. With clean, natural, great tasting, and long-lasting food storage, with our natural and nutritious freeze-dried food, you'll be storing the food you love to eat. Log on to ContraRadioNetwork.com and click on the Valley Food Storage banner. Times are changing. The circus of politics, healthcare's low standards and high prices, and let's not forget food quality. What to do? Arm yourself with Life Change Tea at GetTheTea.com. In a world of chemical imbalance and poor air and water quality, it's time you make a move. Log on to GetTheTea.com and stock up on organic non-GMO supplements. Don't forget the tea. Cleansing your body never felt so good. And we have a brand new tea called Take Down Tea, which helps support healthy glucose. All natural body support so you can be at your best naturally. All you have to do is log on to GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. We're not a fad that comes and goes. We are the real deal. Join us and armor up. GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. Changing America's health one tea bag at a time. All right, now, welcome back from the break. I'm glad you're here. Stuck with us. Hey, um, I don't know if you guys noticed or not, but apparently, and you know, and, and I find it hard to believe, the media didn't say anything about this, that Congress, uh, well, the House at least, has quietly approved warrantless spying. spying. And you know what? The media, as usual, being their usual dishonest, untrustworthy, feckless fools that they are, looks away. Let's not say anything about it. And you say, John, where would you hear this from? I got it from the American conservative. You know, and while cameras are trained on the impeachment hearings in the House, the lawmakers slipped away last week to vote for a continuing resolution that if passed by the Senate will fund the government through December 20th. But that's not all it will do, my little chickadees. Democratic leaders added language that extends some of the most controversial provisions of the Patriot Act. Well, come on, guys. Is that really surprising? These are the people that love big government. So so talked into the section of this must-pass bill is titled Other Matters innocuous sounding as it is and it includes an extension of three foreign uh, intelligence surveillance act authorities until march 15th 2020 and section 215 which is edward snowden exposed the government uses to justify sweeping mass surveillance warrantless po- search powers and the call detail records which is a cdr program by the way i want to say thank you for listening to my friends in the NSA, thank you for listening, guys. Please call. Call me. I know you guys are listening, and that's cool. I dig it. I don't care. What I want you to do is this. Call me. I have questions. Not that you could answer it, but I've got questions. But anyways, welcome to the NSA and other big government organizations for listening in. I appreciate you guys' support. But getting back to it. Now, sneaking this provision into a must-pass bill, Pelosi has forced liberal Democrats to choose between allowing these provisions to sunset or funding the government. Now, just as Democrats are decrying uh, POTUS Trump's abuse of executive power, 
They're busy giving his administration an extension of those same powers. And that's Justin Amish, a congressman from Michigan and former Republican who added, it's surreal. Now, Amash submitted an amendment to strip the Patriot Act language from the budget bill, but Democrats on the Rules Committee blocked the amendment. Well, the thing of it is this. He was a Republican. He says, no, I'm, sw- I'm going to become an independent. I'm going to be, I'm going to caucus with the Democrats. The thing of it is this. If you left your party to join the other party, why in the hell would the other party trust you? Why would the other party who you joined trust you? It's kind of like how the British never really fully trusted Benedict Arnold. Yes, they made him a general, but did they really trust him? Hmm. All right. So the Patriotic Extension passed the House with nearly all Democrats voting in favor. If it clears the Senate and Trump Trump signs it into law, Democrats will now be responsible for enabling warrantless surveillance against Americans. By the way, you ever notice, you know, how the Democrats scream, oh, it's quid pro quo. No, it's bribery now. Can I point out something? Every member of Congress and the Senate, they're always engaged in quid pro quo. They're always engaged in legal bribery. Oh, if you give a donation to my campaign, I just might consider voting for this legislation. And if it's enough, I might even sponsor it too. Just saying. So yesterday, Pelosi said the president has abused his powers for his own personal political benefit. Today, she wants to extend the president's powers to do warrantless surveillance of Americans. That's what Amash wrote on Twitter. Now, both parties are equally hypocritical on this. Trump supporters crow about Director James Comey's FBI abusing the FISA courts to, to surveil the Trump campaign, while Democrats blame Republican George Bush for the Patriot Act and decry executive power under Trump, yet both teamed up to extend the administration's surveillance authority. Why? Because in the end, government always, always, always is the final arbiter of its own power. They also extended the call data records program, which National Security Agency, which is the NSA, can't even demonstrate provides any value. For privacy advocates, this is such an obvious choice. Now, Jake LaPerec, the senior counsel for the Constitution Project at the at the Project on Government Oversight, said in an interview with the American Conservative, because the CDR program vacuums up all the phone call records of anyone within two hops of a specific selection term, a few dozen FISA warrants can lead to the phone call records of millions of Americans. It's incredible privacy invasion. Tens of millions of phone records that are caught up in this. There's hundreds of thousands of Americans that are caught when they have a warrant on one person. Now, repealing the call records program should have been a no-brainer thanks to technical irregularities during collection. The NSA said it inadvertently, their words, not mine, received a huge amount of call data records. Then months later, another over-collection incident, say it ain't so, caused it to delete every record it had collected and voluntarily stopped the CDR program entirely. Senators Graham and Feinstein were acting a few months ago like they're tough by contemplating eliminating the CDR program, even though that's widely considered the lowest hanging fruit among a series of needed reforms, said Josh Withrow, Legislative Affairs Manager for Freedom Works, in an interview with the American Conservative. But that was before members of the Trump administration before appeared before congressional committees and requested that CDR authority. The NSA had voluntarily shut down. Be renewed anyways because it might be useful one day. India McKinney, Director of Federal Affairs for the Electronic Frontier Foundation, told the American Conservative, Look, we want to have that tool in our toolbox because it could be, could, could be valuable moving forward, an NSA official told the Senate Judiciary Committee. Now, according to the intelligence agency's liberal interpretation of Section 215, the business records provision 
could allow the government to collect intensely personal private information like medical records, location data, hell, Facebook does that, or even possibly footage from an Amazon Ring doorbell camera, all without a warrant. Yet the funding bill included the extension of surveillance powers past 231 to 192. Only 10 Democrats defied leadership to vote against the resolution, including the squad, Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib, the ass of Congress herself, and then you have Ayanna Presley and Ilhan. Who am I really married to, Omar? Ultimately, this episode illustrates how Congress continues to fail to perform its most basic duties. Now, no doubt, doubt the vast majority of the members of the House tell their constituents that they are against warrantless surveillance and unchecked executive. But then again, how do they vote? It's pretty obvious. We know what they do. By the way, let me point out something. One thing, and I can't stand the guy. I think he's just as slimy, but doesn't look as slimy as Blumenthal. And that's Schiff. One thing Schiff has done, which has been good for all Americans. He has shown, without a doubt, without a shred of doubt, any doubt, reasonable or otherwise, that politicians will lie to your face. Hell, Schiff did it looking into the camera when it was being nationally televised on all the news channels. Think about it. He said, he lied, flat, flat out lied, looked right, right in the camera and lied to you. So for those of you who think that, well, my congressman is kind of honest and, you know, ah, wrong answer. He has proven what we've always suspected and have always known. Only this time, there is no doubt about it. It's there for everyone to see. Go to YouTube, look it up. His little star chamber proceedings have done wonders for the Democratic Party. Oops. For the Republican Party. Because ever since the impeachment has gone, Trump has raised millions and millions and millions of dollars in donations. Nice job, morons. And his approval rates have gone up since the shift show has started. When people start to see basic unfairness. They don't like it. They don't want any part of it. They don't want to see it. And they don't tolerate it. Now my guess is this. They're already starting. I said this what a week, two weeks ago? can't remember which episode. And I said Democrats are going to reverse course on impeachment saying, you know, we don't want to put the country through this. We're, we're, we're just going to no, nah, we're not going to do the impeachment. And that's how they're going to save face. That's how they're going to do it. As a matter of fact, you've heard the talking points go out today. Uh, We're coming up on an election. I don't see any reason to do impeachment. That's how they're going to back out of it. And now they're going to put that binder back on the shelf. Oh, there you go. We're going to use this binder. The next binder they play will be tax records. Now look, it's not against the law for Trump to withhold his tax returns. And if he's a private citizen, no one has a right to look at those except the IRS, and even then, I don't like the IRS. But as president, you want to release your tax returns, that's fine, that's up to you. It's not required. All right, let us get back to, uh, I got to do the break again, you guys know that, that's how we do it. So stick around, and we will come back on the other side of the ads. Thanks a lot, stick around. This is Contra Radio Network, internet radio for the discerning prepper and patriot.
Hey folks, guess what the number one phrase that Life Change Tea receives by email? You ready? We love this tea. We love this tea. Time after time, week after week, we love this tea. Life Change Tea gives you more energy, a beautiful cleansing, and fulfills its slogan perfectly. The tea that makes you go. So if you want to be on your health game, log on to getthetea.com and order Life Change Super Strength Tea. Packages come in a one month supply, and when you brew this stuff, wait until you see the results. Aren't we all about the results? And with a lot of people's health struggling, we can use a little bit of help. Doctors will tell you, disease starts in the gut. So, log on to getthetea.com. That's getthetea.com. Be our next email saying, I love this tea. I mean, I love this tea. Get the tea at getthetea.com. Helping America, one tea bag at a time. Proper has made tactical gear with a purpose for over 50 years since their first U.S. Navy contract in 1967. Today, Proper designs and manufactures professional-level tactical apparel and gear for military, law enforcement, and public safety professionals and civilians, whether in the service, on the job, or off for the weekend. Log on to ContraRadioNetwork.com and click on the Proper banner now. Life is unpredictable, but you can count on Valley Food Storage to help you and your family prepare. With clean, natural, great tasting, and long-lasting food storage, with our natural and nutritious freeze-dried food, you'll be storing the food you love to eat. Log on to ContraRadioNetwork.com and click on the Valley Food Storage banner. Hi, this is John Jeffers. Join me for the Jeffers Brief right here on the Contra Radio Network. Catch the Jeffers Brief Wednesday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern Time on the Contra Radio Network. Talking the issues and taking the hit. The two crazy guys. Catch the two crazy guys right here on Contra Radio Network, Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Hey, Daniel J. here, and I'm inviting you to tune into my radio show, MLM. The good, the bad, and the truth here on Contra Radio Network. Catch Daniel Monday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. I feel good that I'm keeping myself informed. The Conservative Underground. Tune in to The Conservative Underground on the Contra Radio Network, Sundays at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Welcome back for segment three of the Jeffers Brief. Okay, um, something I found I want, and I thought it was interesting. I found this on a CNS News. I don't know if you heard about this, and probably not. Craig Bannister wrote a blog on this, and it's very interesting, and I wanted to share it with you. Mainly because there are black, cons- black American conservative voters. There are black voters who do support the president. As much as the MSM can't stand the thought of it and won't report on it, ignore it, hoping it will go away, it won't. But according to this, it says 44% of black voters say civil war is likely within the next five years. Now, that comes from Rasmussen. Uh, uh, Yeah, it's a new Rasmussen Reports survey. Nationally, uh, 31% of all likely voters say a second civil war in the next five years is either very likely, which is 9%, or somewhat likely, 22%. But 15% of black Americans consider it very likely, and 29% say it's somewhat likely. Now, compared to all voters, a slightly higher percentage of other minorities, 34%, also say civil war is at least somewhat likely. Of those... 
10% think civil war is very likely, while 24% say it's only somewhat likely. So white voters are the least concerned about the prospect of civil war, with 38% saying it's not at all likely. We call those people dead people walking. We call those people the unprepared. We call those people the ones who rely on the government to take care of them when it all goes to hell. Anyways, so 30, 38% of white voters say it's not at all likely. They buried their head, head in the sand like the ostriches they are. Compared to only 22% of blacks and 25% of other minorities. Now only 7% of white voters view an impending civil war as very likely while another 20% consider it somewhat so. This is a survey of 1,000 U.S. likely voters, which was conducted on November 18th to the 19th, 2019. It has a margin of sampling error of plus or minus 3 percentage points with a 95% level of confidence. If you don't think black American conservatives are paying attention, you're wrong. They are. They're very much paying attention. Well, what else we got here? What is this? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Let's take a look real quick. Okay, yeah, we're going to do this one too. Uh, Sundance is reporting. Um, this is, when you when you hear this, it's going to put you, please pull over before you start banging on the, the steering wheel. Because when you see this, you're going to go, what, and the, what are these clowns thinking of now? Well, I'm going to tell you. Um, you know, if you have liberal family members around this week's Thanksgiving feast and celebration, it would be wise to understand the scale of their disappointment, even if they have yet to recognize it. Perhaps best course will be just to give them that knowing smile. However, with Schiff, he wants to discuss this with this um, impeachment by public opinion. He wants to discuss it with his constituents and colleagues before he makes a final judgment on this. Here, Adam, make a final judgment on that, you jack off. Amid diminishing public support for the impeachment fiasco, and with more Americans starting to realize the past two months were an abject listen in political narrative building and legislative manipulation, the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence, the HPSCI Impeachment Committee, Chairman Adam Schiff transmits a letter today to the House Judiciary Committee Chairman Jerry I want a wimpy hamburger Nadler. Now, if Schiff were in the MMA venue, this letter describing the House report to the House Judiciary Committee would be a double tap to the mat. While there's a slightly less than strong impeachment position, impeachment by inference, he says. Inference, not evidence. Inference. You can't get a conviction anywhere on inference. Anyways, previously... Mueller and Weissman attempted to prosecute President Trump, the fictitious horse thief, for attempting to obstruct his hanging. Now Schiff is in fearing guilt because President Trump didn't present alibis for his whereabouts when the fictitious horse was stolen. Yeah, it's looking like a fail, a huge fail. <laughs> but Schiff continues. He says, but the evidence of wrongdoing and misconduct by the president that we have gathered to date is clear and hardly in dispute. What is left to us now is to decide whether this behavior is compatible with the office of the president. That is not a standard for impeachment and whether the constitutional process of impeachment is warranted. It has been our hope all along that our Republican po colleagues would join us. You know what? The Republicans took their boot and shoved it up your liberal democratic collective asses. I like it! Do it again, guys. Keep doing it to them. Wait. President Trump has done terrible, horrible, dastardly stuff that the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Nancy Pelosi, says makes Donald Trump an imposter in the office. But now the Assembly of Three Committees need to figure out whether such imposter behavior is compatible with the office of the President's. Do you see the obfuscation? Pelosi, Schiff, Nadler, and Lawfare are in political extraction mode. That is, trying to walk backwards to the impeachment exit 
only stepping into their prior footprint so that the left-wing nuts cannot identify their retreat. Why do you think today they had some unknown congresswoman from a Democrat from Michigan who no one's, no one's ever heard of throw out the test leaf, put her finger in the wind? Oh, I'm not for impeachment. It's too close to election. Maybe he just needs to be censored. Oh, wait, I'm for impeachment. A few hours later, nope, I'm for impeachment. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, good luck with that. Now you, And the Democrat base is going to go bananas if the House doesn't have an impeachment vote. And yet Pelosi could lose her gavel if the House has an impeachment vote that results in two foolish House managers showing up in the Senate chamber with legally limp articles of impeachment. Oh, please do. Please do. I want to see it. In fact, I might even record it. That's how much. I really think this, they're a bunch of fools. But you already know that, and so do I. What else have we got here? Uh, you know what? Let's do this. Um, yeah. Yes. Yes, we will do this one. Because it's going to take a little bit of time for us to get through it. And I want to get to it because, again, you're not going to hear it from anybody else. You'll, you'll, you know, from other people, my, you know, people like myself, who do their podcast, well, more than likely, you'll get the idea. All right. So this is updated from Sundance. And Brandon, I know you like listening. I know you like Sundance's information. So, so listen up, my friend. I know you're behind the wheel somewhere in either Canada or the Western United States traveling the internet or the interstate system. So hang in there, pal. Enjoy this. So it's been updated. There's a disturbing likelihood. The FBI lawyer manipulated Carter Page's own communication with the FBI to target him. That the documentary material that FBI lawyer Kevin Kleinsmith falsified with actual communication from Carter Page to the FBI where Page was seeking their help in 2017. This revelation would explain and reconcile two seemingly contrasting points. Point one. The media have asserted, based on leaks from the principal reviews, the Woods file manipulation by Kleinsmith did not impact the validity of the original FISA application on October 21, 2017. And point two, the material Kevin Kleinsmith did manipulate was so egregious and unethical it stands as one of the most clear examples of corrupt FBI abuse of power in recent history. So we're going to outline, which will highlight a very disturbing picture. We're going to paint a picture for you. And we want you to be able to look at and go, oh my. So start by remember the timeline of the Carter Page targeting through the use of a FISA application to the FISA court. The original application was submitted on October 21st, 2016. The first FISA renewal was January 12th, 84 days from the origination date. The second renewal was April 7th, 85 days from the first renewal. And the third renewal was on June 20th, 83 days from the second renewal. All right? So there you have that. Avoid the spin. Let's focus on what we know of the facts. Remember, you're entitled to your own, your own opinions and interpretations. You are not entitled to your own facts. So let's focus on that. According to all reporting on the falsified evidence created by FBI lawyer Kevin Kleinsmith, the manipulation of the Woods file happened happened during one of the renewals. Now, Michael Horowitz uncovered errors and omissions in documents related to the wiretapping of a former Trump campaign advisor, which is Carter Page, including that a low-level lawyer, Kevin Kleinsmith, altered an email that officials used to prepare to seek court approval to renew the wiretap, the people have said. Now, I gotta ask you, man. At some point in time, you just gotta be sitting there thinking, that's gotta be criminal. And it's gotta be, because when they raise their hands and swear that this is what it is, the court's supposed to take it for what it's worth. Now, could this 
Could they throw Klein Smith under the bus to save themselves? You bet they can, and you bet they're going to. If I was Klein Smith, I'd be running my ass over to Durham saying, I got to cut a deal. This is what really happened. This is what is going on. And save your butt from what's going to happen. All right, we'll be back on the other side of this segment three, and we're going to continue and end it on segment four. So stick around. We'll continue with it in a bit. You're locked on to the Contra Radio Network. Life is unpredictable, but you can count on Valley Food Storage to help you and your family prepare. With clean, natural, great tasting, and long lasting food storage, with our natural and nutritious freeze dried food, you'll be storing the food you love to eat. Log on to ContraRadioNetwork.com and click on the Valley Food Storage banner. Welcome back to part four, our fourth segment, fourth and final segment will take us home for the week. By the way, I hope you have a good turkey day. And please, if you have liberals in your family, drive them nuts. Drive them right up the wall and out the door. So you never have to deal with them ever, ever again. Leave them screaming and crying in the living room as they screech, throw tantrums, and leave the house never to eat your turkey again. And better yet, if they leave, good. That's more turkey for you. That's my public service announcement for today, this week. All right. Meanwhile, apparently the Virginia governor, as reported by Gateway Pundit, has sent a letter to Secretary of State Pompeo. And my listeners in Virginia, you're going to go berserk. So, But you know what to do. you got to contact this guy, this goofy uh, Ralph Northam. You know, the guy who did the blackface but is still in office? Just think if it was a Republican, he would have been thrown out. But Northam sent a letter to Secretary of State Mike Pompeo on Monday asserting Virginia will welcome refugees as set up under Executive Order 13888, enhancing state and local involvement in refugee resettlement. The order says the federal government will resettle refugees only in jurisdictions in which both the state and local governments have consent to receive them. Quote, I have read a Federal Executive Order 13888, and I write to reaffirm Virginia's position that we welcome refugee resettlement in the Commonwealth, he wrote in the letter. Virginia's lights are on and our doors are open, and we welcome new Virginians to make their homes here, the governor wrote. Only five states have agreed to take refugees under the new order, which Trump said will give localities the power to reject them. Northam, you may recall, confessed in February that he was one of the two men in a racist photograph published in a medical school yearbook 35 years earlier. After all, if you can go back to Kavanaugh's high school yearbook, why can't you go back to his medical yearbook? You know what I'm saying? So one man was dressed in Ku Klux Klan robe and the other was blackface. He later recanted, saying neither man was him. No, no, no. it was, but no, it's not. And, of course, Democrats in the legislature, in the Virginia legislature, okay, okay, yeah, yep, okay. What a bunch of fools. Meanwhile, over at CNN, Anna Navarro has targeted Diamond and Silk in a racist tweet. And it's a good thing she's a Democrat, because if it was a Republican that did it, they would have gotten rid of him. So CNN far-left analyst Anna Navarro, who plays, who plays a Republican on CNN, we all know she isn't, 
attacked several top black conservatives in a tweet on Monday. She's uh, posted in her rebuttal to two recent polls that show 34% of black voters supporting President Trump. Navarro thought the best way to respond to the poll was to post something racist, and she posted this. This is a quote. Zero chance this is accurate. Zero. The poll must have been conducted in the homes of Ben Carson, Kanye, that sheriff guy with the hat, and those two cubic zirconia and polyester spandex ladies. Unfortunately for her, uh, Alex, ALX, on Twitter responded. New polls, black Americans support for President Trump. Emerson, 34.5%. Rasmussen, 34%. So that's over a third. Of course, nothing was going to happen to Anna. It's okay to be a racist when you're pushing the leftist narrative day in and day out, is it not? But that's true. Watch what will happen. Nothing. Of course, I'm sure the 12 viewers on CNN will be happy with that. And then... um. If you want to catch over to uh, Breitbart, you, oh, good Lord, I know. Um, Glenn Simpson of Fusion GPS, you know, his ass is in a sling. It's just a matter of time before they nail him too. But he wrote a book called Crime in Progress. And he says there was no Democratic conspiracy to frame Donald Trump. Let that sink in. You know, oh, I can't stand it, but I, I will. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. So on Tuesday's broadcast, MSNBC's Andrea Mitchell reports, political opposition research group GPS co-founder Glenn Simpson dismissed allegations that his firm's research into then-presidential candidate Donald Trump was a Democratic conspiracy. Mitchell asked, Glenn, can you set people straight about the so-called Steele dossier and why you think it's being used by the Republicans, by the president, by House Republicans, Devin Nunes certainly, to try to undermine the Mueller report and a lot of the conclusions that go into the theory that Ukraine was involved somehow in targeting the president and not something I should point out, not just the intelligence community consensus, but also the bipartisan consensus of the Senate, Republican-led Senate Intelligence Committee in only recent months. You talk about a setup. That whole that whole that whole thing was one question. One question by Andrea. Here, Andrea, why don't you take a sixteen inch softball and just lob it in the air? You know, please. How dishonest can you be? Simpson said essentially because the Steele dossier was a piece of campaign research, bought and paid for by you know who. They think that by pointing that out over and over again, they can delegitimize everything that happened after that. As you point out, that's just not right. It's not accurate to say that the FBI investigation of the Trump campaign was triggered by the Steele dossier. It's also a fact that the first half of our investigation of Donald Trump that led us to hire Chris Steele was funded by the Republicans. Huh? So let me get this straight. You know what? There are some never Trumpers. Never know. So there was no Democratic conspiracy to frame Donald Trump. I had never been to the Ukraine. The idea that the dossier comes from Ukraine is yet another phony conspiracy theory. All right. So Mitchell asked, here we go. Here's the second softball pitch. Why did you bring Christopher Steele in? And Simpson says, Chris is a leading authority on Russia worldwide and is well respected by his colleagues. He served a tour in Russia, then rose to become the head of the Russian desk for MI6 before retiring in 2009. We had done other work with him, and he lived up to his reputation as a sterling analyst and researcher of information from the former Soviet Union. That's why we decided to work with him. The events that led us to hiring him were essentially this long investigation that began commissioned by the Republicans to look into Donald Trump's business career. And that began in September 2015, before the Republican primaries had even started. And it went on for months and months and months, and more connections between Trump and the people from the former Soviet Union kept coming up. And so we finally exhausted all the public records, and we decided we needed someone who could actually do some work inside Russia. Wait a minute. Let's see here. What does he say? What did he say? What did he say? Uh, <laughs> where is it? Okay, so his first answer is it was a piece of campaign research 
that was when we were working for Hillary Clinton and the Democrats. And then he changes it at the end saying, oh, no, it's the Republicans that funded it. You know, Chris, the bottom line is you can't be trusted. You can't. You just can't. And it's right there. What a fool. Okay. I haven't done this in a while. So I think we shall do it now. Because we haven't talked about the clown class, the class of the snowflakes. So here you go. Yes. Yes. Let's talk about our justice warriors once again. Because they're fools, as we all know. Oh, what do we got? We got a few minutes here for this. Well, Elizabeth Warren has signaled she'll pick a woman as a running mate if she's the presidential nomination in 2020. Big surprise there, huh? Washington and Lee University students have demanded, demand, mind you, removal of Washington and Lee photos from their diplomas. The students and faculty at the Washington and Lee University in Lexington City, Virginia, are demanding that the school remove photos of George Washington and Robert E. Lee from their diplomas. Um, got news for you clowns. They've been doing that since God knows when. And just because your snowflake sensibilities are triggered and you can't, you just can't look at it, then don't go to school there. Duh. You got lots of schools you can go to. Go to another one, idiots. Twitter has suspended journalist Andy No for hateful conduct. <gasps> Andy knows a journalist known for covering and being violently targeted by the far-left extremist Antifa movement after he attempted to argue that the United States is a safer place for transgender people than most other countries in the world. Well, we're not throwing them off the rooftops, are we? Just saying. Meanwhile, the movie Bombshell, starring Shalise Theron as Megyn Kelly, wins a social justice award. Got an idea for that. Because it wins a social justice award, I got an idea. Don't go see it. Make them lose money on it. It's Hollywood trying to influence you. Do the next best thing. Ignore it. Let it die at the box office. Maybe maybe you'll be on the CW some night. Yeah, the CW network on TV. That's where many of the uh, ideas for Hollywood go to die. And many more should go there too. Goldman Sachs is telling employees to use transgender pronouns to become an ally. Oh, how beautiful is that? Yeah. And teachers strive to ensure students unlearn the Thanksgiving myth. So teachers across America are striving to have their students unlearn what progressive activists say is nothing more than feel-good Thanksgiving myth. Well, there you have it. Well, you know what? We've, we've, we've got very, very few seconds left. I want to say thank you for listening to the Jeffers Brief. I'm John Jeffers. Thank you. And support. Go to ContraRealNetwork.com. Check out our sponsors. Please buy something Appreciate it. We will see you next week here on the Jeffers Brief. I'm John Jeffers. Have a good one. Until next time. This is Contra Radio Network, internet radio for the discerning prepper and patriot.